Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Demco Stay and Play Supplemental Braking System here on our 2016 Chevrolet Equinox. So a supplemental braking system is going to be a required component for a flat toe setup in most states over a certain weight. Our Equinox here is probably going to exceed those in just about every state, so it's a safe, uh, safe thing to say that this is going to be a requirement to flat tow this vehicle. Now what this actually does is, and the reason we need it, it's going to apply the brakes here in our towed vehicle while we're driving our motorhome. And that's important is because it's going to allow us to come to a smooth and effective stop. We're not pushing on the motorhome as much as we would normally, wearing out those brakes faster, and our stopping distance is going to be greatly reduced here with our setup while we're towing our vehicle and we have the braking system active. So the stay and play is proportional. If you've ever towed a trailer with electric brakes, you may be familiar with brake controllers or proportional and time delay brake controllers. So it's kind of the same theory that gets applied to this. The proportional design means that we're not gonna be locking up the brakes here in our towed vehicle. We're gonna be applying a force to the vehicle's brakes in an amount proportional to our, to, uh, to our travel in the motorhome there. So say someone cuts in front of us on the highway, we really need to come to a smooth, effective stop and we're slamming on the brakes on our motorhome, we're gonna be sending quite a bit of force to the brakes here on our towed vehicle. Now, if we're just coming to a slow stop at a stoplight, we obviously don't wanna send a ton of pressure, it's gonna lock up the brakes and we're gonna be dragging. Therefore, we're not gonna to have to worry about that because we're just gonna be sending a small amount of pressure. The operating unit or the G-Force controller is gonna sense the motion or the velocity of the motorhome there and apply the brakes appropriately to that to come to a safe, smooth, and effective stop. So here's what our stay and play braking system looks like installed. The operating unit that is, which is one of the few things we're actually gonna be able to see. Most everything else is gonna be hidden away, tucked back behind the scenes. So if we come inside the vehicle here, you'll see our other two components to our system. We have the G-Force controller here, so the G-Force controller is where we can make our adjustments, and this is also where we have our on-off switch. So this system, it makes it really easy when we do need to tow or we need to revert our vehicle back to just driving around town. All we do is have to flip this switch on for towing and then off when we're driving around town. And then mounted to the actual brake pedal arm, this is the physical device that pulls the brake pedal, and this is our pneumatic air cylinder. So we have a little bracket attaching it around the brake pedal arm. It's anchored to the firewall. And then once the system is pressurized, the vacuum is gonna pull from the operating unit. It's gonna send pressure to this line, and then it's gonna depress our pedal for us. And this is what actually provides us with the stopping power. So in regards to installation, like I said a little bit earlier, these are kind of involved, but the stay and play is definitely one of the easier permanent systems to set up. I wouldn't say anything's particularly challenging. It's just gonna take you some time routing all your lines, wires, finding places to mount, but we're gonna do a lot of that hard part for you in regards to the locations because we already have everything set up so we can show you exactly at home where you can put everything to make your installation experience that much easier. So to start off our installation today, we need to find a place to mount our operating unit. Now, we have a couple different options here. What we've determined the best one, and frankly, what I use the vast majority of the time, if there allows, and that's to mount it directly to the top of the cover there for our fuse box. So the uh, fuse box lid, if you will. So one thing I wanted to go ahead and make sure of before I mounted it here is that I could close the hood because you can see it is kind of a tight fit. But luckily, we will be able to do that with the operating unit in this position here. So once we've determined that this is gonna work, for each of the four mounting holes on the side of the unit, I have it attached to the fuse box lid with some zip ties. So over here on this edge, I had to cut off part of the flange here because it was gonna interfere with our little clip here, our operating mechanism. And this actually flange, I had to bend down. Normally it's gonna be flush like so. So once we've bent that down, I drilled two holes into the battery box lid and then I used the zip ties to secure it to our operating unit. And then any extra holes or space, I went ahead and filled those in with some silicone. Now, if we jump onto the other side of the operating unit, you can see I didn't have to alter the flange any. I just drilled straight down into the top of the fuse box lid. And then on the sides here once, so I could stick the zip tie through and then follow up with some silicone. So next thing we're gonna do is take care of our vacuum connection. 
So the vacuum line is gonna come straight out of the operating unit at the top here. You should already have this little section of hose along with a check valve pre-installed. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the vacuum hose that comes in our kit here. You're gonna spray down each of these fittings with a soapy water solution. That'll help you insert them onto the barbs. But we're gonna go ahead and push that all the way over there. And then we're gonna bring it over here to where our brake booster is located down there. So it's kind of a tight space down there. So what I went ahead and did is you can see this little gray slash white connector there. That has a plunger which goes directly into the brake booster. I took a pry tool there and I just pried that away from the brake booster. And that actually allowed me to pull most of that hose up there that we're gonna be working with up in this area here to give us a little bit more room to work. So once we have a little bit more room to work with our, with our hose here and we have it pulled up into this area here, you're gonna be cutting it about five or six inches down from this little plunger here, the connector that goes to the brake booster. And then you're basically gonna be installing a T in line with that. Now, one end of the T is obviously gonna to go to the engine, the other one is gonna to go to the brake booster, and the other one here is gonna go up to the operating unit. Now, with that T there, the diameter of the barbs on the T are a little bit smaller than the hoses that are on the factory lines. Therefore, we needed to use the barbed hose adapters that come in our kit there, as well as the check valve that's provided. So the check valve, we need to make sure that the black side is facing the engine. So the check valve looks just like this. And again, the black side faces the engine. The green side or the clear side is gonna face the brake booster. So that's all sort of going on down there on that factory line. You're gonna have to cut three or four inch sections to mate the adapters. And then you can just plug up the T's there, route it up to the operating unit. And the other one is just gonna go in line to our factory connection. Next, we're going to go over the wiring with you guys here. So we have a couple wires coming from the operating unit here. We have a couple wires coming from the G-Force controller inside. We'll show you that here in a little bit. But basically, we're just going to go over now how all those wires tie into one another along with the breakaway switch. So let's jump up to the front of the vehicle there and show you where, where we have our breakaway switch mounted. And then we'll show you how we routed the two lines up to these two units here so we can show you how it ties in. So here's our breakaway switch. We have a black and an orange wire coming from the back of the breakaway switch. Now, in regards to mounting, a lot of the base plate kit manufacturers include some sort of tab on there that you can attach it to. If not, you're just gonna have to figure out something on your own, attaching it to the bumper. Really, whatever way is gonna work. We just need it at the front of the vehicle here and facing forward. But now we're gonna take our two wires here, just use some zip ties to secure it to the base plate here and then we're gonna follow some existing lines up into the engine bay. So here you can see the black and orange wire that came from the breakaway switch. We have it ran up here along with a couple buck connectors because this is the spot here where we're gonna tie it into our operating unit. So the orange wire here, that is gonna to attach to the brown wire coming from the operating unit. But if we take a look at the connection we have here, you can see I actually have two brown wires that's because I piggybacked this brown wire and this is actually gonna to go to the inline fuse holder and then it's gonna to attach to the positive battery terminal. So you can see we just have a ring terminal on one end, we have a buck connector on the other end and that's gonna be pretty much tied in with the brown wire coming from the operating unit and the orange wire going to our breakaway switch. Now yours is gonna look a little bit different because we actually already have the PCM removed here that actually sits on top of the battery now we can pretty much show you how it mounts, but basically the PCM kind of installs like this. You're gonna have an Allen head screw there. There's also gonna be a cover on here, but that just slides off. But you remove that Allen screw and then we can just easily set this aside. And this is gonna allow us access to the battery, which we'll need for a few more steps in this installation. But we covered the orange wire coming from the breakaway switch now. Now we're gonna go over the black one so the black one, as you can see here, is gonna to go to the blue wire from the operating unit. Now, similar to how we did with this connection here, we have another piggybacked wire coming out of this buck connector. And this one is actually gonna be routed inside the cab of the vehicle. We'll show you how we got there in a little bit. So now we should have two more wires coming from the operating unit, and that's gonna be the red wire and the black wire. Now, this is actually gonna tie in with the G-Force controller, which we talked a little bit about just a little bit ago. 
So we're gonna go ahead and show you how we mounted the G-Force controller, and then all the wires that are ran to that, we ran up into the engine bay, and we can make our final connections. So keep these two wires to the side here. We're gonna take you in the vehicle there, show you how we routed the wires outside, and then we can finish up making the connections for our wiring. So here is what our G-Force controller looks like. So it's kind of hard to see, but out the back of it, we have a nice bundle of wires, five or six wires or so, and those are actually gonna be what we're running into the engine bay. But in order to mount the G-Force controller here, we're gonna have two self-tapping screws on either side, attaching it to this little kick panel here. We need to make sure that the G-Force controller is oriented in this direction, just like we have shown here. But in order to get the wires into the engine bay, you're gonna peel back your carpet. You can see we have the carpet here. We just peeled that back, tucked it behind the gas pedal there to keep it out of our way. And then if we peel it back a little bit more, you can actually see a factory grommet here in the floorboard. So we took a step drill bit and we cut through that factory grommet. And then we took the wiring lead here. These are the bundle of wires coming from the back of the G-Force controller. I just simply routed them underneath this black panel here. You can go on top as well, it doesn't really matter. And then we have it routed through the hole in the grommet and that's gonna bring our wires out underneath. Now we'll go ahead, jump underneath the vehicle there and show you how we got the wires from underneath the vehicle into the engine bay. So we have it covered with tape now, but there's gonna be a nice access hole in the bottom of this frame corrugation here. So we're gonna be pretty easily be able to sneak our wires because directly above that is the grommet. So you can actually see we have the bundle of wires. I actually have some electrical tape around them just to keep them together. But our bundle of wires coming from the G-Force controller is gonna come straight out this hole, up and over this metal bracket here. I got my finger on it still now. And now we pretty much just follow these brake or these coolant lines up all the way up into the engine bay. So we need to be careful because we have our steering shaft here along with the rack and pinion. And that's obviously a moving component. We don't want our wires wrapped up in there. So you wanna make sure you have a couple zip ties here securing that bundle of wire to the factory lines which are attached here to the body up and out of the way. Now you're gonna have a little bit of trouble getting your wires up into the engine bay from underneath here. So what I recommend doing is coming up top, back where the brake booster is on the firewall, just take a piece of airline tubing, if you have a metal coat hanger, and just shove that down through the firewall there and it should come up in this area here. You'll be able to reach up there, grab that, tie your wires to it, then go back up to the engine bay and then pull your leader back through, bringing your wires along with it. So here we actually have our G-Force controller wires. And again, just back behind the firewall there, along where the brake booster is, we just pull those up and that's what the wires you see here are. So right away, we have the black and the red one. If you remember, that's gonna attach to the two wires we have left over to our operating unit, the black and the red ones as well. So now we have all the wiring for our operating unit done and we just have a few more to connect here for our G-Force controller. So once we get rid of the black and the red, we should see that we have a white, a green, and a yellow. So the white wire is gonna be a ground. I took a ring terminal, and we just simply have that attached to this post here on the battery terminal. And then that's gonna leave us with our green and our yellow wires. These are actually gonna tie into our tail light system here. So this may vary a little bit depending on what tail light system you're using. Uh, a lot of the time we like to use diodes or this particular one, we have a plug and play Hopkins kit. So basically all I did was when we were routing the trailer connector wires that go from the front to the rear for that wiring harness, we just made a loop into the engine bay so we can tie into the green and the yellow wires for that. So that's basically all this is doing. Just think of it as a loop here that we have the two tail light and stoplight circuits connected to our wiring harness there. But that's gonna wrap up pretty much all the wiring that we need to do for this system. We can jump over to a few other things here in a moment. I will like to say though, that now that I'm up here and thinking about it, the blue wire here that we piggyback from the breakaway. So we basically just use the same path that we just showed you for the G-Force controllers in order to get this blue wire inside the vehicle there. We also did the same thing for our airline connection here at the top of the operating unit. But don't worry, we'll go over that a little bit further here in a second. But basically, we're just using that same path into the vehicle and under the vehicle for the blue wire and the airline tubing. So this blue wire, we're gonna set aside for a minute. We'll talk about that last. But the airline tubing, we wanna run up and pretty much in here where our brake pedal is gonna be. So 
you're gonna have a panel here covering most of this that you're gonna need to take out. There's a couple screws here at the front. There's a couple nuts at the back and then a couple push pin fasteners. It's pretty self-explanatory how that comes out. It's really hard to show you because everything is just tucked back so far under the dash there. So take a little bit of time and patience, get that panel out. There's only a few fasteners and then we're gonna have a much greater room to work here. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna install the actuator onto the brake pedal arm and then anchor that to the firewall. So here's what our actuator looks like. And here we can see we have it attached to the brake pedal arm using the bracket and the hardware that comes in our kit there. It's pretty self-explanatory there. I like to mount the uh, brake pedal arm in the middle of the bracket and just tighten down these bolts on the outside just a little bit to hold it in place. And then we're gonna anchor it to the firewall. There is a nice little metal plate here around the steering shaft. It's gonna provide some extra support for our anchor point. So that's what I went ahead and drilled into. So I drilled into that using the self-tapping screw, and then we're gonna adjust the tension on our cable here. Now, the best way to do that is just sort of leave the factory preset on the cable there at the anchor point, and just slide it forward or backward within this bracket to increase or decrease tension respectively. So it's kind of hard to get a straight line on this vehicle due to where we can mount our anchor point. So it is a little bit askew, but basically, we're looking for that cable to be straight when it's coming, rating, coming out of the actuator there and we're depressing our pedal. So we need to check the angle of that and just try to get it as straight as possible. But again, unfortunately for this vehicle, it really doesn't allow for that straight line pull. So you are gonna have a little bit of a pitch or angle to that cable. But once we have it mounted, go ahead and tighten down these nuts a little bit more just until you start bending the bracket. And then we're just going to simply take our airline tubing that we routed in and attach it to the top of the actuator. And then I'm going to take a zip tie, tie it up here to make sure our airline tubing is not falling down, getting in the way of our footwell here. So now we need to hook up our vacuum line here. Now the best way to do that is to locate the vacuum port coming from the brake booster. And you're going to follow that to the throttle body and that's going to be the vacuum line we're hooking into. Once we've identified that, we can go ahead and cut it in half here, a nice straight section of our line. And then we can install our little T-fitting here, as well as a check valve. Now one end of the T-fitting will go to the line coming from the brake booster, the other will go to the line to the throttle body. And then the other end of the T-fitting is gonna go to our operating unit. So now, last but not least, we have our wireless transmitter. This is probably the easiest thing to install in this kit here. There's only two wires. Number one is we're going to take some zip ties and basically just install this anywhere we can up and out of the way here. Just I have it zip tied to some wires that are fixed there so it's not going anywhere. Just wherever we can install this so it's out of the way is perfect. And then we're going to have our duplex wire lead here with two wires coming from it. One is a white wire, one is a red wire. The red wire we have attached to the blue wire that we brought up in through that grommet earlier. Remember that's the one coming from the breakaway switch in the operating unit. And then the white wire we have just grounded to the metal body. I can show you where we grounded ours, right up there. And once you have those connections made, just tuck all your wires up away. We use this black plastic panel here, and that's pretty much it. So now the easiest way to test this is number one, make sure that you have the switch flipped on in the G-Force controller. Have someone come outside the vehicle here and simply just pull the pin for our breakaway switch. You can see our cylinder activate there. That lets us know we have power and everything's hooked up correctly. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Demco Stay and Play Supplemental Braking System here on our 2016 Chevrolet Equinox.